Hi, I'm Jim with Marine Electronics Installation. I'm here today to give you five tips, uh, ways to get better performance out of your VHF radio on your boat. First off, professional installation. Sometimes just the routing of a coax placement of an antenna for VHF radio um, or electrical connections can make a huge difference in performance of the radio. If you're not extremely familiar with uh, radios and how they work, then uh, professional installation might be a good option. Uh, sometimes this can get you several extra miles of range out of your radio. Next, antenna placement. Um, a lot of times I see people running antennas that are leaned back in a 45 or even a 60 degree angle. Uh, this was done by a few people just to help keep them from breaking off in really severe weather when the boat's pounding in heavy seas. Um, is not good for performance. These antennas were designed to be used at a 90 degree angle straight up and straight down from the water surface. Uh, when you start leaning them back it affects the pattern that they radiate in and performance to the front and the rear of the boat are often not very good. Next, keep the microphone a proper distance from your mouth. Far too often I go out to boat somebody's using a radio or I see them using it, they've got the microphone jammed right up against their mouth. Sometimes they're even screaming in it like the louder they talk, the further the radio transmit. Well, that's not the case. Um, keep this microphone about three to six inches away from your mouth. Talk at a normal volume like you're talking to somebody standing a few feet next to you on the boat. Um, you know, too loud, it starts to distort the sound coming out the other end. These radios are fixed at 25 watts maximum output power, so no matter how loud you yell in this microphone, it's not going to get you any more distance. It's just going to start distorting the sound so people won't be able to understand what you're saying. Um, CTO in this area has channel 26 and 27 for automated radio checks. It's a great way to see how you sound in a microphone. Tune up your local station, radio check, radio check over listen to it, it'll read that back to you a few seconds later and you can actually hear what you sound like and tell if the microphone is proper distance from your mouth. So with that being said, our next uh, tip is to use proper power level on your radio. Um, you might be able to see this if you look really close. There is an H and L button down here on the mic. That is for high power and low power. On this particular radio, high power is 25 watts, low power is 1 watt. Uh, handhelds are slightly different. Um, low power on most handhelds is 1 watt, high power is either 5 or 6 watts. Um, obviously, if you're in an emergency situation, you want high power, you want to get as much range and clarity as you possibly can. Um, if you're talking to your fishing buddy that's only a mile or two over, trolling next to you on a reef close by, then low power is the best. Uh, for a couple reasons. One, low power, you're not transmitting further than you need to, so you're not interfering with other people on the same channel that are trying to use it. Um, another one is, uh, sometimes if you're bottom fishing on a small ledge or rock or structure, you don't want everybody in the area to know, hey, I'm in 70 feet of water using this bait catching this fish, come on over. Um, so, you know, you limit your range a little bit when you don't need to have the higher power, and uh, that makes more sense. Also bridges, most bridges operate on channel 9 or 13 at low power because they don't want to interfere with the next bridge. So uh, low power when needed, high power when needed, just learn when you need those to use them. Normally on the front display of the radio, this one's not turned on at the moment, uh, but there's usually an indicator to let you know if you're in high power or low power at that time. Um, almost all radios have this feature. Next, your antenna and power connections. These are very important. The antenna connection is right here on the back of this radio. It's in the same location on most radios. It uses a uh, PL259 connector. Oftentimes, a radio that's not performing well will be due to a loose or corroded connection right here going to the antenna. If you're having an issue, uh, check to make sure that this uh, is a tight connection. It's not loose. You can also take it off and look at it for any signs of corrosion, uh, then put it back on. Uh, that's really important. Another one is power connections. Of course, this radio is no good. It's a trash radio out of a boat. Uh, no longer works, so we cut the power cord. But uh, make sure your power connections are nice and secure, tight. Make sure they're clean. Uh, if you have any kind of voltage drop going to the radio, typically you'll get a lower power output out of the radio, which will affect your range. Sometimes the front of these radios even have a uh, warning on the display. They'll say low voltage um, if you're having a problem with that. 
So those are our tips uh, to go over them real quick again. Professional installation or at least installation by somebody that knows radios and antenna systems well. Um, do not run your antennas back at a 45 or 60 degree angle. Straight up and down is best for performance. Keep the microphone at the proper distance from your mouth so that the sound is not distorted. And use the proper power level for communicating. And make sure all of the connections on your radio are clean from corrosion and tight. Hopefully this will help everybody out, get a little better performance out of your radio systems, and thank you for watching.